Hello everyone! It is once again that time of year. It's time for the top reads of the year. And this year I'm gonna do my top reads a little bit differently. I'm gonna post them as a series of videos over the course of the next couple of days. Today I am talking about my top three rereads of 2021. Tomorrow you will see a video about my top five non-fiction reads of 2021. And on Thursday, you will see my top fiction reads of the year, my top six fiction reads of the year. But today, I'm beginning with my top three rereads. I reread 16 books this year, and it was a very good rereading year. I reread a lot of great stuff. But the way that I picked these three books as my top rereads was by looking at just how much they increased in my estimation upon a reread. Because I did reread a lot of books this year that I would probably rank as books that I love more than some of the books I'm going to talk about in this video, but that kind of stayed stable in my estimation, which I loved before and which I love now. And that's not to say that these three books I'm going to talk about are books that I did not like before, or, or even love, but they're books that took a significant leap in my estimation upon rereading them, and where rereading just benefited them exponentially. So. These are my top three rereads based on that criterion, and I, they are ranked, so it's three, two, one, and I will start with the number three choice, and my third favorite reread of the year is The Tempest by William Shakespeare. I reread this for Shake Temper 2021, which is a event that I host with Jason from Old Blues Chapter and Verse and Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, where we read Shakespeare plays. And so, there's actually a whole video which is a recorded discussion video of Rainy, Jason, and myself talking about The Tempest. And I believe it was posted on Rainy's channel, Rainy Day Reads' channel, so I will leave a link to that video if you want to see some in-depth thoughts from me and from the other two hosts of Shake Temper on The Tempest. But The Tempest is a play by Shakespeare that I would have said before that I like and admire. I liked it for its language, I admired it for its kind of subversive, sort of weirdly postmodern plot but I didn't love it. But on this reread, so much more came out of the story for me. Just its themes of forgiveness and grace just leapt out at me so much more powerfully this time around. The characters leapt out so much more profoundly to me this time around. And I just had fun with the weird, whimsical little story that it tells. And so it became my number four favorite Shakespeare play which before my reread of it this year, it would not have been. It would have been much lower than number four. It wouldn't even b broke the top ten. So The Tempest by William Shakespeare is my number three uh, favorite reread of the year. My number two favorite reread of the year is, another, is a book that I loved before. I definitely did love before, but I just gained a whole new level of appreciation for it this year, and that book is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And what I really appreciated about The Lord of the Rings reading it this year was the style that Tolkien uses in his prose, because I think he shifts between a few different registers in The Lord of the Rings. I think he has kind of a children's literature kind of style, especially at the beginning of The Fellowship of the Ring, which is taken kind of from The Hobbit. And then there's a bit more of a staccato, kind of almost dry, cut and dry style which I think is taken more from the sagas, the Icelandic sagas, the Norse sagas. I might be wrong about that, but that's the sense I got, that it was this very staccato writing style. Uh, and then, it, periodically in The Lord of the Rings, he will burst out in just the most beautiful prose that sounds like it's from an epic poem or from the King James Bible. And what I think is so great about The Lord of the Rings as a book is I think that it's the contrast between these three styles that adds to the power of this book. Because I think those beautiful, eloquent passages would not hit with the same power as they do if they weren't surrounded by these other styles, by these, this childlike writing and this more staccato, dry writing. And I just thought that that was such a great way to write the story. I thought it was so subtle and interesting. And so I just gained a whole new appreciation for that. And so, Lord of the Rings, number two. And then my number one 
favorite reread of the year has to be Moby Dick by Herman Melville. This was another book that I absolutely loved beforehand, but which I would not necessarily have put in my top 10 books of all time, exactly. But after my reread this year, I think it's actually maybe my favorite book of all time. It's just the kind of epic and philosophical and weird story that I love. It's one of those works of literature that is so mysterious and weird, and I kind of wonder how Herman Melville even came up with the idea to write this weird, bonkers novel about a white whale being chased by this whaling crew. But that King Jamesian and epic style that Tolkien occasionally writes in in The Lord of the Rings, that's taken from the King James Bible and from Shakespeare, is basically Herman Melville's entire style in Moby Dick. And when a writer can write with that kind of prose style and have it work so well on every page, you know, I'm on board for that. But I just love its themes of, you know, the relationship of humans to nature, these existential themes, these theological themes, themes of megalomania, and I also love Moby Dick's fierce, like, Americanness. I think it's one of the most American stories one could ever tell, you know, about this crazed megalomaniac who thinks that this whale is out to kill him, even though that whale probably doesn't care about him. It just strikes me as so very American, and so I think it's my favorite book and my best reread of the year. So. Anyway, those are my three rereads of my top three rereads of 2021. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me your thoughts if you've read these books, if you like them or if you don't like them. And I will see you tomorrow for my top five nonfiction books. Talk to you later.